Canadian Geographic asked me to talk about my favorite place in Canada for their Our Country series, and I have traveled to a lot of places in this country, from east to west, in the summer and in the winter, through mountains, glaciers, and ocean shores. But there's one place that I visited recently that was so unexpectedly charming and kind of reinforced for me the value of letting go, traveling solo, and appreciating what we have right here in Canada. It's on the east coast. It's not very exotic. It's Moncton. Moncton, I know, of all the places I could talk about, today I'm gonna tell you about why Moncton was special to me. A few months ago, I decided to take a solo vacation. Uh, Moncton is just a short, inexpensive flight from Toronto. When I told people I was going there, they were like, why would you go to Moncton? But that just made me want to visit it more. It made me want to find something there. <laughs> Moncton is a city in New Brunswick. It's a university town, it's English and French speaking. Its most popular tourist attraction is probably Magnetic Hill, but I don't think people think of Moncton as a tourist destination. It's more of an in-between, somewhere that you stop on your way to Charlottetown or to Halifax. I hadn't done much planning. I'm really not a planner at all. I just wanted to see what would happen once I got there. I'm really lucky that anywhere I go, I can meet someone who watches my YouTube videos, and these people become my local guides. In Moncton, I met up with Lees, super sweet, very gracious, and very proud to be from New Brunswick. All the locals that I met in Moncton were really kind, and I think that's something we tend to overlook about the East Coast. It's got some of the most friendly people I've met in my travels. So the first reason you need to get out to Moncton is the food. Let me tell you, I love seafood. In fact, I had just come back from a trip through the Mediterranean with Kentiki. I had calamari every day, but does anyone do seafood like the East Coast of Canada? I went to a gas pub called Tide and Boar. They had oysters, mussels, scallops, lobster. I'm salivating just thinking about it. There was another restaurant we went to called Catch 22. Amazing food, very friendly service. The food is fresh, local, inventive, and without any of the pretension that you can often find in bigger cities. Which leads me to the next reason to visit Moncton. Smaller cities have all these quirky things. There's a laundromat that they turn into a cafe. There's the CBC, our national public broadcaster, in the same building as a supermarket. Donaire chips. Actually just kind of tastes like a burnt potato. And there's a famous river that they've affectionately dubbed the Chocolate River. It's just really brown. You sure like the color brown around here. I love to drive. I love road trips. Just being on the road and being in control and having the freedom to stop wherever you want to discover things. That's another reason why I loved Moncton. It's perfect for road trips. Within 20 minutes to two hours, there were so many things to see. I drove out to Buktush and practically had the beach to myself. I drove out to Shediak. Again, amazing lobster. Giant lobster. The world's biggest and one of the most beautiful sunsets I'd ever seen. But what made me really fall in love with Moncton and the surrounding area was being able to observe the tide. I drove out to Hopewell Rocks, which is just on the upper reaches of the Bay of Fundy. It's a beautiful spot where you can observe the ocean coming in and going out every day. And you can actually walk on the ocean floor. I had never done that before. I'm walking on the ocean floor. This is ridiculous. It was really weird to be able to walk where just a few hours prior there had been the ocean. At times it felt like I was on another planet. I've become fascinated with the tide ever since that trip. All right, I'm kind of trapped on some rocks, but it's beautiful at least. I'm literally waiting for the ocean to move that way so I can walk. It's great. Everything's great. There was one moment when I was completely alone and I stepped a bit too far out onto the ocean floor and my foot sank and I got stuck. And, you know, I would have had a ton of time before the ocean came back, but in that moment, I panicked and I started thinking about how my phone was dead and no one knew I was there and I was gonna be swept into the ocean. It was just a funny reminder of my own mortality and how insignificant we are on this huge planet. I made it to the beach and I met a family from Vermont. It felt like we were the only people on earth in that moment. The mom told me about how she had taken a road trip through Eastern Canada when she was younger and how she wanted her daughter to experience that. I came when I was 16 with some friends and it just has always stuck in my mind. Yeah. And I was like, I wanna go back yeah. so bad. So finally this year we could do it. 
In that moment, I just felt really proud to be Canadian, to be from such a beautiful country, to be a traveler, to be someone who could just strike up a conversation with random people, because I don't think we do enough of that these days. Awesome, well, thank man. You. Thank you so much. Enjoy your trip. You too. I took a photo of them on the beach, and she actually reached out to me recently, so it's cool to just have another friend in the world. I really enjoyed my trip to Moncton. I had no idea what to expect, but I came away with an appreciation for a city that I think a lot of people don't think to go to. If you want to feel connected to nature, if you want to explore in an environment that is safe and friendly, you should get out to Moncton. There are so many things to see in Canada, and there were so many other things to see around Moncton, but I'm never worried about seeing everything when I travel, because it just gives me a reason to go back and I can't wait to go back again one day.